Okay. So we're going to get started with building your survey. So how do you think we go about building this shipping container? When you open the file, what's your units? Mm -hmm. So make sure you're not working in millimeters. It won't do you any favors. So in order to check that, if you're not sure, you type units. And have a look at what you're working in. So I opened my project as the large still not working. There's a computer that's already logged in right there. Does that not have Rhino on it? Okay, so um, I like logged in with that large objects feet thing and lo and behold, uh, it's also didn't do my feet in fractional inches. So it's good habit when you start a new project just to type units in. Okay, so we're gonna start a brand new concept right now, which is called layers. So if you have ever worked in AutoCAD because, or ever worked in anything in an office, in a company, you will know that layer management is like life. Because if you don't put things on the right layers, it becomes kind of hard to navigate. And this is, will become more clear as we go forward. But for example, if you look at the handout, this is just a tiny snippet of what like a layer setup might look like. It'll be like walls, and then there will be sub layers that say walls finish, wall structure. Um, there will be curtain walls, doors, windows, openings, glass, columns, etc. If you look next to that list of text, you'll see a light bulb. So the light bulb means turned on or turned off. And that's sort of the power of the layer. Um, how do you hide something? You can type hide, which is a strategy. But then you have to go about selecting everything. Um, and it's much easier to just turn off all the glazing, for example. Like glazing is a very heavy thing in a rendering, for example, or trees, which is geometrically heavy. You can just turn that layer off and then turn it back on when you need it. Let's say for a visualization. Um, it's also the easiest way to change things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about creating layers, drawing on layers, and then we'll get started with drawing our container which you all know how to do, I'm sure, right? You just intrinsically know how you're gonna do that. No? And then we will uh, maybe get to the site, hopefully today. Um, the one thing I will point you to is the assignment. Um, it is up, it's called Building a Survey in Rhinoceros, and you're asked to build the site and the shipping container and rhinoceros based on your survey. Also, you will do some things using Google Maps, which is a typical way you would do it as well. Um, it's time consuming, so we will be working on this today and we will have time to work on this troubleshoot individually in the next class and it will be due at the beginning of class next Thursday when we will introduce the new projects for each section. And then um, that's pretty much where everyone's going to start working on their own work. So we have the ARC 62 group will be working on one assignment and ARC 61 will be working on another. And that will be on next Thursday. So, Let's get started on layers. So you see this tab, does anyone have like tab toolbar issues over here? You can actually pull this over and you start to see more little tabs. 
So this is the properties, the one that looks like the gradient wheel of color. You can hover over its edge and make it as big or small as you want. Frankly, that's probably too big, but. And then next to properties, you will see a layers tab. Anyone started all the things you've done in the past, all the drawing you have done, it has been on the default layer. Default layer is bad because it just is a catch-all. And then if you keep, if you don't like think about this at the very beginning, you end up drawing stuff on the default layer and it becomes a problem later. So the first thing I'm going to do is catch up to you all. This has always been like this. I don't know why, but I'm going to just delete this. So the first thing you want to do is start a new layer. So I'm going to right click in this window and type new layer. And I'm going to just think about the first thing I want to draw. The first thing I want to draw is my survey. So I'm going to type survey. So that's all good and great. You can change the color of your survey lines to be whatever color you want. I recommend not choosing yellow because typically your default setup in Rhino is if you select something that's yellow and that means it will always kind of look like it's selected. But yeah. Mm. It's beautiful. So by clicking on this colored box, you can change the color of the modeling. This will be the color of any geometry and it will be the color of any lines. Okay. So the color thing actually keeps you in check with making sure you're drawing on the right layer. So if I start to draw now a line, you'll see it's still black. Why? Because I'm on the default layer. So you don't switch layers until you check this. And then you draw another line and it's purple. Do a nice. So you'll see in shaded mode, it's also using that color. What do you think I should do since I accidentally drew six of these spheres on the default layer? Which you will do. And then you'll be like, crap. It is not the end of the world, but you can go about grabbing all these objects right clicking on lit nope i'm in a mode sorry <laughs> wait wait is it i never draw on the wrong layer <gasps> oh i remember you grab these babies right click and change 
your objects layer. So you grab the things that you want to change, you right click on the layer you want it to move to, and then you highlight change objects layer. And you can sort of see a whole lot of other options when you right click on a layer. You can select all the objects, which is super helpful. Um, you can imagine again, if you have all your trees on a layer and you've discovered it was like a really bad idea to use that tree model because it's crashing everything, you can very quickly, instead of deleting the layer or turning everything off, you can select all the objects on that layer and delete it. If you get some insane model from like a mechanical engineer and you don't need any of the HVAC stuff, you can select certain parts of the HVAC that's heavy and just delete it. You know, it does come in handy. You can change materials when we get into renderings universally really quickly, so that's another thing. So change object layer, boom, they're all purple, fantastic. Okay, so now that we know that we're on the right layer and we're gonna be on the right layer for the next couple minutes, drawing in purple, let's start to draw our survey. What's the overall dimension of the shipping container? How long is it? 19 feet, 10 inches. It's a standard 20 foot, whatever. <laughs> 19 feet, 10 inches. This is like the 20 foot shipping container. There's also 40 foot shipping containers. So what do you think we're gonna, how do you think we're gonna input that? Did you change your units? Change your units. What do you think? Boom. Okay, so you can either, um, in this case, since it's a rectangle, you can draw a rectangle, but in often um, in other non-rectilinear spaces, you would start off using a sort of polyline. So that's here called polyline. If you type polyline, it pops up, but this is again, one of the rare buttons I always use because it's like right there at the top and kind of clearly communicates things. I can click here, draw up, type 19 feet, 10 inches, enter, and then click. How wide was it? How wide was the shipping container? Look it up, you're drawing this. You have to draw this right now. So go find your survey if you cannot remember this. How many? 101 inches. So the beauty of Rhino is it doesn't matter if you did it in feet and inches. You don't, it doesn't matter if you did it in inches. It doesn't matter if you did it in centimeters and you're working in millimeters. You can type all this in. The reason you don't want to work in millimeters is, you know, there's a lot of reasons. But we're just going to type 101 inches, hit enter and click. So we already know it's 19 by 10. So using this sort of smart key, I can line up the bottom. If you are not able to do that, try turning on your O snaps with the end and then the smart track. So I'm gonna line it up here.
So right now I have Ortho, Osnap, and Smart Track on. And then I will just click to close the geometry. Okay, new eyes. I'm going to get rid of this baby. I'm just going to cancel. Hold on. So if you do any of these that are in the small inches or you are not speedy enough to identify this, you can always type new and open it in the large objects. That's why some grids are smaller. So if I go into small objects feet right now and I go back to this other rhinoceros grab the precious, control C, control V, eh, whatever. What's your units, small grid peeps? Type units. Okay, so I've been working in feet. That was my default, maybe that's the difference. Yeah, so if you're in inches, your grid is just smaller. It's not a big deal. It's trying to do you solid, but if you do want grids that are bigger, then just switch to feet, but it's not a big deal. When it says feet, switch to inches, when it says, do you wanna change the scale of your model by 12? You say yes. because otherwise it is taking 19 feet and making it 19 inches. Okay, so how tall was the precious? How tall was the container? 128 inches, fantastic. So I'll go to perspective view. I'm going to grab my rectangle, switch it over to my appropriate layer. And I'm gonna grab this, making sure I'm checked in to this layer so I don't have to keep moving stuff. I'm going to extrude my curve, one, two, eight. Ah, that's feet. Another reason, 128 inches. Enter. Beautiful. Looks familiar. I can just go ahead and move this over to shaded view. It's not capped, but this isn't actually what it looks like, right? This is kind of like a general outline of what it is. If yours is open, you can just type cap, if that's what you want. Select your open rectangle and type cap if you want to put a lid on it and a floor on it. So this is just a rectangle, right? It's not really what a shipping container looks like. So what do you think one of the things that's important to draw is? Hmm? Doors, Doors super important. What other elements? 
The oh. corrugated side. Yep. What else? There's one other big one. The other thing is the structure generally, that big rectangular frame that the walls sit in. So those are the three most important things to sort of model today. So do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? Images. So this is a similar, a similar drawing. This is not our container, but the same idea, which is really interesting because they should be standardized, right? But you'll notice that uh, the corrugation is different like we had those big gaps on each side and then there was also different holes on the ground our framing is thicker but this is effectively your end goal so let's start with drawing the wall how are we going to draw this corrugation? You just drew lines and extruded them. Do you think that's a path forward? You can literally just draw lines, turning off ortho. A lot more precise than this and make the corrugation doesn't that seem like a path forward so we're going to start with the side wall if i want my line to be straight but it's not in ortho mode. If you hold shift, it will only draw a straight line. Same Z's, if you are in ortho mode and you wanna draw a non-straight line, you hold shift and it lets you draw whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this line that's 19 feet. 10 inches. And I'm going to sort of do a new layer that's wall. And I'm going to make it green. How far was the first corrugation away? How many inches? You all measured this. You all did it. How far away the first corrugation was? Um, Of this. So, three and three eighths. Three and three eighths. I don't even know if this works. Document camera.
Okay, so you see this? Was this the frame or the corrugated wall? So all the shaded ones yeah. are the ones that are sticking out. Right. All the white ones are the ones that are sticking behind it. Super, and this is from that edge. That's the, the big edge where the, exactly. the, the space was right. on one side. So how, <coughs> sorry, I've gotten in a touch wet. I'm sorry, ruined everything. Um, so how thick was the frame? Three and three quarters. Okay. So that means that our wall frame will be three and three quarters. And I am going to put this here. So, back to here. We have a frame that was three and three quarters. I'm going to just draw a rectangle typing the at symbol 3.75 inches comma 3.75 inches. Enter. That's the frame. This green is terrible. Let's change it to red. Okay, so this is the frame. Yeah, does everyone see that? Mentally get that? Now, based on this drawing, we will have a line that comes from here and is three, uh, three eighths, three eighths is hard. Forget the three eighths. I'm going to draw this line three point three seven five, which is three and three eighths. Enter. Oops, I did it at feet again. I gotta get it together. 3.375 inches. Where on earth is this going? Line. There it is. Okay. How deep is the corrugation? How far away is the front face to the back face? The depth of the corrugation is 1.5 eighths of an inch. 5 eighths of an inch is easier to type at 625. One way to do this would be to sort of just draw back one point six two five inches enter but it's not exactly like that right it's kind of angled The 
pieces from the frame. And this is the first bunch of, this is the first row of corrugation. Remember, it's all a unique butterfly there because you have this very large panel here. So we are starting from the side and we are doing the corrugation. The next dimension is two and three quarters, so I'm going to type 2.75 inches, enter. I'm going to go back up and do this. I'm going to keep going. One is apparently three. Inches, enter. Four point seven five inches, enter. Four inches, enter. And we are on to the large panel, which is 14.75 inches, enter. And then 3.78. So what we are trying to get at is a drawing similar to this based on our site. So you need to start drawing lines and entering dimensions. If you are wondering how deep the corrugation is, I mean, see, this is like one of those things, right? You might not have even bothered to take that dimension, right? Like you weren't thinking of it. Luckily, our friend did, so we'll just use his for now. But this is one of those instances where you're like, inch and a half, apparently, cool. 
But this is another one of those situations where you're going to have to like, oh, am I going to go back to the site? Can I identify this dimension via my pictures? Is there a standardization that I can look up online? There is, but we have it already. But if, you know, if this was me, I would just go online and find something and figure it out that way. So the depth of these are here. I'm going to go ahead and put the dimensions tags on this so that you can, this is not, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this so you can see dim. So these are the dimensions I inputted. You do not have to add dimension tags. I'm doing this in case your survey does not have this information. This is also not pretty, but it's informative. So this is your objective. Yours is different, cool. I'm just showing it for people that don't have it. Line, I'm going to demonstrate this. You're all doing great. I know, it feels miserable, right? So if you are starting to draw this long chain of things with the polyline and you are all being really meticulous and like waiting and then typing, you might accidentally, after spending five minutes drawing this, you might accidentally hit escape and lose everything. So if you are working in polyline, it's good to, you know, eventually hit enter and make it what you want it, and then you can start up again. And then at the end of the day, when you want to join everything, what do you think you type? Join. Group is a different kind of thing. So join actually geometrically joins things. Group organizes things. So if I grab this and type join, it is now one curve, not two curves. Supremely well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So you might be asking, I'm going to just get rid of these dimensions for now for a hot second. Well, you know what? I'm going to copy this over so that if you are using the dimensions still, you can use them.
Okay, so if you like are already done with this, you can move on. You might have discovered, again, I should probably steal your uh, survey again. Okay, so huh, someone took it. That's great. <laughs> so this is the the typical in the center. There are four in the front, three in the back. Yes, that's what that says. Yeah, we're all committing to that now. All right. <laughs> it's true now. That's what we're doing. So the thing is, is that we all know that's repetitive, right? Um, it's great practice to sort of sit around and draw. Um, these lines over and over again. But you could also just draw a line back. And then this one, what do we say, three and a half inches, right? Three inches. Three inches. You can just um, sort of grab these babies and copy. But before I get started on that, I'm going to do one handy dandy thing. So we do know that this is our 19 by 10 wall, right? We do know that this beginning portion is also at the end, right? So you can mirror. So when you are mirroring, this is like obviously super handy in architecture because often things are just symmetrical. You can adjust your O snaps to snap to midpoints. So right now I have, like, I usually keep these all off and by the end of the project I've turned them all on. But right now I have midpoint and end and I can snap to that midpoint and mirror the exact same thing on the other side. And now I'm just going to grab these babies and copy, copy, copy. It's a race. Go. Do you see why midpoint can become a pain? Okay. So, 
my last realization is that my exact four inch by three inch was not correct. Right now I am approximately this much. This end should be here. So I am three and a quarter inches off with that corrugation. This is why you take overall dimensions. What is more valuable? The truthfulness of this four inch by three inch system or the truthfulness of that 19 by 10 wall? Yeah. So the exact to the eighth inch right now is not important. What I am going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the ones that were in the center up until that point I'm going to type join and I'm going to cheat. Some of you won't have to do the joining because you're drawing with the polyline tool. I am going to use stretch to stretch the geometry uniformly to that point. So I've drawn this thing. I'm going to type stretch. I will start my stretch axis at the very beginning. I will come to the bottom. I will start my stretch. I will click to end my stretch axis there and I will stretch it to this point and voila, that looks great. I'm happy. We're good. So everyone get to this. I'm going to zoom in to this again. So you can see it. So the first thing you want to do, I think, is probably mirror. So take your 19 foot line, line it up end to end. Grab your geometry and mirror it along this line. You're all going to get there, don't worry. You all are already overachieving and going ahead, so I will show you the last ideal place for you to be. All right, so some of y'all are overachieving. Cool. So we already know that this precious baby is 101 inches wide. There's you know, no reason to arduously redraw this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, <clears throat> grab this and type mirror. Oh my gosh. And I'm just gonna, for now, not draw the door. But, if you grab this, type join. You can now grab your curves and in perspective view, extrude the curves to look like the corrugation. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So your main goal today is just to get to this point. Um, we will do the framing and the door on the next class period. But, you know, don't forget all your expertise. One thing that I'm sort of noticing is that I can't see something that I would call structure versus what I would leave as corrugated wall. So I'm actually going to do a new layer. And I'm going to call... Oh wait, I did this already. So under survey, I have a wall layer. 
I'm going to do a new layer that's structure. And I'm going to change these objects to that layer. And make it blue. So that it's easier for me to see. So everyone try and get to this point where we are mirroring your geometry and extruding the curves in the next couple minutes. Wait, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, huh? Yep. So your objective is to finish your wall. So that's what you are all on right now. You are going to mirror that to the other wall, right? Those two walls are identical. There's no reason to spend the next two hours drawing the other wall on the other side, although it's a great exercise. So I'm gonna hit mirror. I am going to mirror it on the center of the other facade. Pull it down, click. So they're both there. And then all you have to do is grab all your curves and extrude them. So the way I extruded them was I snapped to this original cube because I knew it was the right height. And it's so beautiful. Hit rendered. Mm, just lovely.